dreaming only gets you so far. You actually have to take action. And it's not big action. It's really small action. This episode brought to you by Restaurant Systems Pro. Well, the biggest uh, philosophy we have in our company is open and honest communication now, mm. right? I, I might be the CEO, but I tell everyone, like, push back. Give me your thoughts. Like, we might not go that direction, uh, but I want to hear it, and I want to talk through it, and we want to process it. And when I started the Hampton Social and went off on my own, that's kind of why I wanted to be a sole proprietor and, and do it on my own. I thought there was going to be some amazing people in the, in, in the industry that could come work for me and I could listen to them who had those years of experience of what I didn't, which was whether it was being a bartender, whether it was being a chef, whether it was being a uh, floor restaurant manager and take someone's uh, experience and try to use what hopefully was some, you know, well-rounded and thought out expertise of a businessman and use all those little pieces and come up with the best formula. And yeah. that's what we've done now. And I have an amazing team that's helped me grow this company. To sit up here on this bench and take pictures. And this really became our staple and famous for us. We have these at all of our restaurants and the amount of hits we get just from this sign on, on Instagram is amazing. With excitement, allow me to introduce to you today's guest founder and CEO of Parker Hospitality, Brad Parker, Brad, are you feeling unstoppable today? Uh, I'm feeling unstoppable today. Yes, sir, <laughs> man. I'm looking forward to this conversation. A really interesting path into the restaurant industry, so yep. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get into it. But before we share who you are and how you got to where you are today, let's get that motivational, inspirational ball rolling with a success quote or a mantra. What do you got yeah. for us? You know, I, anything's possible, but really it's you got to put one foot in front of the other. Mm. I think, you know, the, the way to success, people think they dream but dreaming only gets you so far. You yeah. actually have to take action and it's not big action. It's really small action. Yeah. And I'll explain later on, you know, my, how I got here and yeah. how, how it, it seems simple, but it really is just putting one foot in front of the other and, and trying to uh, take a leap of faith. Yeah. My love for just hospitality, not in the restaurant industry, um, was I always loved having my friends over at my house. And I was the one that was making sure when I went down to the, you know, we were in the basement, the, you know, the, the sodas were set up and the tositas were set up for the football game and the <laughs> chips and salsa were there. And I, I just loved doing that. Yeah. I, it's my family. We grew up doing that. So I think it just rubbed off on me. I yeah. want to shelf because we're going to we're yeah. going to unpackage the Hampton Social. Yep. You have the basement. You also have your Mediterranean concept. Mm -hmm. What we're saying today. Nisos, am I saying that correctly? Mm -hmm. uh, so. But I want to, knowing what you know now, yep. 10 years later, almost right from opening your first bar. Yep reflecting back at that time and the decisions you made and what you did and the order in which you did things like take us through that like chronologically oh, like man. like what do you know now that you wish like you could tell you that version of yourself man looking back i first didn't realize how long of a road it is now i've been doing this since i think you know i started the process when my friend came into my uh, office and said let's do this in 2011 was when the first thought process so now i'm going on almost 11 years right yeah. And it's been a long 11 years, a lot of hard work. And if you're going to get into this business hard, it, you know, the mantra of hard work pays off. It really does. You have to be smart, but you really have to be hardworking. And going back, you know, I thought, hey, when I first got into the, the industry, I thought I could just hire like a business guy. You could just hire the right people. They'll do it all for you. I don't need to know everything that they can do it. There, try, try that today. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's a good part of that that you should have as as a restaurateur about getting the right, surrounding yourself with the right people. But you also have to be willing to get your hands dirty. Yeah, I, and the way I look at that is like you got to be able to do the job, but your your goal is to find people who are better at you yep. than all the different verticals, and then eventually you start checking the boxes off of whatever you don't want to do or Correct. you're not that good at. And yep. so you're just putting all of your energy into the thing that you actually do like. To do. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's the, the thing I didn't have when I first got into the business. And I think I would have told myself is, Hey, do not go into this thinking. You can just say, Oh, you manage this restaurant over there. So now you're going to do a great job managing my restaurant because two things, one, they might be a great manager, but no one cares as much as you do. Mm -hmm. Their money is not behind it. They're, you know, reputation sometimes is not on the line um and so that was 
kind of a rude awakening for me. Did this happen for you? <laughs> yes. Like I, I had tremendous success at American Junkie from a top line sales standpoint, but running the operations and keeping the bottom line controlled and uh, that whole portion was like, I. What that were your was biggest challenges course. looking back? What, what didn't that uh, bar have American Junkie, Junkie have that would have helped the bottom systems. line? Systems. Guess, guess systems, 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 systems. You hear this all the time. It's why the best in the business, the latest entertainers of the world are, are such great companies. They're system oriented companies. Uh, and the system that usually works for one restaurant works for the other. It just yeah. has a little twist on it or something. And, and that's, you know, food costing systems and inventory systems. Um, controlling yourself out of the gate is, is extremely important. So, when we're going to develop a new restaurant and, and look at it, it's as much as it is creative and fun, it needs to be planned out. Like when we're developing a menu, it's not just, hey, here's some food someone will like. It's how does that dish affect the way the kitchen operates? How is it going to affect the customer experience? We'll be able to pull, pull this off <clears throat> over and over and over again. There's so many pieces in the restaurant business that a lot of other businesses don't have you know it, i always refer to the guys who supply our ice machines they have two things to do send me my ice machine and then send out someone when it breaks or, <laughs> or repairs it outside that the machine makes ice there's not a lot of moving parts yeah. here you have <clears throat> creativity what cocktails are you making how are you making them how many steps are in the cocktails will they be fast enough to get out to the customers will the quality be there are you sacrificing quality for a price point that you're charging uh same with the food every you know all those how are you staggering your labor when are you busy when are your busy points during the restaurant um who's coming in is everyone coming in at one time or are they you know coming in at different hours as you get busier and how do you pre-shift those people i mean there's so many moving parts in the restaurant i think that's why um unfortunately so many people aren't successful in it you know statistically they always talk about the st statistics of restaurants yeah. It's a lot of moving parts. It's so much. And man. no one thinks of this stuff. Yeah, and like you got to be a freak of nature to keep that all in your head and to be able to to go through that mental checklist without having some anchor of consistency or to, just to, to check yourself against, yeah. right? Like, am I on track? Am and I that, doing the things I need yep. to do today? And that's why those checklists, you just said that's mental. You know, getting into the business, it was a mental checklist. Yeah. It was somehow, some way, my brain was able to say, okay, here's the things we need to do. And not only my brain, but the other people around me are like, here's what we need to do. And now it's a point of checklist, literally yeah. physically going into a restaurant and, and your host has, here's my checklist yeah. in your kitchen, your prep guys, here's my checklist. Yeah. And it seems so mundane to them sometimes. They're like, why do I have to do this? Yeah. I already know what I'm doing. It's like, because if you just keep following that checklist, it will be consistent every single time. I mean, there should be the issue the picking up the checklist should be the first thing that happens even before like clocking in the first item on the checklist should be clock in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And there's companies out there, yeah. you know, you can take the shortcut. And I didn't know that there's companies like Redbook who will have already built checklists. Now every restaurant's different. So you need to modify it for what you're doing. But I wish someone told me, Hey, here's these, you know, these, sub and it these seems support silly. systems. It yeah. seems silly. And I think a lot of people push back. Like you really need to like put a checklist to have me clock in yep. and to like, unlock the door do you think i'm a monkey it's <laughs> exactly. like it's, no it's, it's not that it's just that like things happen and like eventually you as an employee don't need the checklist it doesn't mean that you don't have to use the checklist but yeah it becomes more of a a thing just to check yourself against like Correct. you're going through the motions and you're just using it to back yourself up. yeah right? and you Did should I be able to stuff? walk into any of my restaurants or any of the melman's restaurants or any of boca's restaurants and go from one restaurant to the other and operate that restaurant if you work for that company you should be able to go in there because the systems the checklist should be similar enough that you will survive that night of service the most serious industries known to us use the checklist yeah commercial pilots <laughs> doctors these yeah. people use checklists it's not a thing to look down on you know yeah. like it's not like a thing of like you don't trust me it's just a way to do the job really well yeah you know? and i think that would be the advice yeah. plan in, in front get those checklists done get those documents done and the rest is easy. Yeah. When we don't do that, when we make mistakes and we don't do that, it becomes a lot. We were actually one of Toast's first time. Yeah. So I was a very early adopter. They, what sold me on it was the simplicity. 
of using the back of house system. Like I was so sick and tired of using Aloha, sitting in the back, you know, at a table and micros and basically being a computer programmer to have to get your POS yeah. updated. And when they came in and showed me like, just hold down the button and change the price, I was like, sold, right? Yeah. Um, now so cloud-based, easy yeah. functionality, shortcuts, and yeah, And they had to work out their kinks throughout the year, but now it's great. The handhelds are awesome for us when you're setting up your restaurant, especially to not have to run all the wiring everywhere, to be able to service patios, close out people's checks right on the handhelds. I think that's a huge thing. Toast, number one recommended POS on the show. Uh, use our links, support the podcast. Thank you very much.